Hey guys, today we're going to be taking a look at the 1997 JCPenney Christmas catalog. And there's Kris Kringle himself just staring at you. I don't know. Anyway, let's open it up. So in December 1997, I would have just turned 10 years old, so this is definitely my era, so I'm really excited to go through this catalog. Now obviously, by then, the Nintendo 64 was out, but they were still advertising some really good deals on the Super Nintendo. Nintendo excitement, if you will. Now for $109.99, you could have got the Donkey Kong Country Super Nintendo bundle. Not a bad price. And then over here, we have some random third-party controllers that I do not recognize. Like, I guess these are wireless docks. Never heard of those. Did you have those? Let me know if you had those, because I've never seen those before. And then this one, okay, number two, what's that one? Rhino Pad six button controller. Play pad features auto fire, turbo, and slow motion. Seven feet capable, huh? And here are the games they were advertising. We got some Mario Paint, Super Star Wars, Mario Kart, Donkey Kong Country 2. That's the Donkey Kong Country game I had growing up. I like Diddy Kong. I should replay that. Monopoly, Wheel of Fortune, and Miss Pac-Man. All right, so let's see how much uh, games we're going for. So now that the N64 was out, things were a little bit cheaper. A little bit. So $34.99 for Super Mario Kart and Super Star Wars. Donkey Kong Country 2, though, $49.99. So that was probably still pretty new. I don't remember what year that came out. And then you got the budget titles of Monopoly and Wheel of Fortune. Now let's compare that to N64 game titles. Let's see. See, everything is about $70. Games were always expensive. So N64 game cartridges. So the expensive ones, Mario Kart 64 and Star Wars Shadow of the Empire. Star Fox with Rumble Pack. Super Mario 64 was $64.99. And here they are showing the games they have listed. The N64 was $169.99 and it came with two controllers. And there's docks again if you want some random third party controllers. I guess they were wireless. Which is why they have that little extra add on there. I have never used a wireless N64 controller. That's interesting. I didn't know anyone growing up that had those. Everyone just used the normal N64 controllers. They probably work terrible, the wireless ones. So these guys. I'm a little bit confused. So here you have Yoshi, Donkey Kong, and Mario. Now I remember there was a 7-Eleven promotion. I still have them. I had, uh, I think I had a yellow Yoshi, a green Yoshi, and then I have Mario, and I have Bowser. And they have the 7-Eleven tags, but they looked pretty identical to this. At least the Yoshis look the same. I'll have to, if I can find them, I will show them in this video because I'm a little confused. So I guess you could order them at JCPenney, but then maybe there were slight variations for the 7-Eleven ones. I don't know, I'll have to look that up. Okay, so how much were these? Oh, they were called Nintendo beanies because beanie babies were popular. <laughs> so you get all three for $12.99. Not bad. So this is what caught my eye. This thing right here, the video game storage case. I never had anything like this growing up. But a few years ago, I got an official Nintendo 64 one that pretty much looked like this, but it actually said Nintendo 64 on it. I'll include a picture um, in this video. But I don't remember having these. These would have been really useful. And then over here, we have a padded nylon fun case, you know, for transporting your Nintendo 64, I guess. I don't know. I'm sure some kids did that. I never took mine anywhere. So now we're getting into the Sega products. And PlayStation. All right, so they were advertising the Sega Genesis 2, the second model. How much was that? $99.99, not a bad price. And there was a Lion King bundle. Pretty good for $100. You get the Lion King, so you can have a very rage-inducing time. Although, to be fair, I have not played the Sega Genesis version of Lion King. I've only played the Super Nintendo version. 
but I'm pretty sure that was my first real moment of anger and defeat playing a video game <laughs> as a kid was thanks to The Lion King on Super Nintendo. Got more third-party wireless controllers. They're really pushing those wireless controllers. That's pretty cool, fighting stick. Now here are the games that they were promoting. Sonic and Knuckles. How much were the games going for? Okay, wow, everything was pretty cheap. I think it was like $20, except for Bassmasters Classic was $35, and Lost World Jurassic Park was $50. Everything else, though, was rather inexpensive. Good old Sega Pico. More expensive than the Sega Genesis 2. So it says, for $150, you got the Sega Pico with Huckle and Lowly software. I have a Sega Pico, but I have yet to try it out and use it. <laughs> I really should. How much were Sega Pico games? Oh, they were more expensive than I thought. So, Sesame Street Alphabet Adventure... $40, The Lion King Adventure at Pride Rock was $50. Sega Pico was not a cheap system. Then over here, we have the Sega Saturn. $219, a JCPenney exclusive with three bonus CDs. So I'm guessing those bonus CDs were these games right here. Got Nights into Dreams, Sonic 3D Blast, and Sega Rally. And of course, there's wireless controllers for this guy too. Wireless controllers for everything, even the PlayStation. But anyway, so now we're getting into the PlayStation. So you can't buy the PlayStation through this catalog, but you can get some controllers, third-party controllers, and some games. And now we have the Game Boy section. So for $60, you could get any Game Boy Pocket and a bonus Game Boy Pocket case. You could get silver, red. I had the yellow one. That was my first ever Game Boy was the yellow Game Boy Pocket. Where you could get a Game Boy carrying case, all those accessories. The rechargeable battery pack was $20 and the accessory pack was also $20. You got a magnifier with built-in illuminator. So I guess that was this. I never had any of the accessories, so. I don't know, and I have yet to use them. I just had my Game Boy, nothing else, and I was fine, you know? I could play it just fine. But now, going back to it, it feels weird. But at the, for the time, I was totally used to <laughs> just playing it regular. So let's see, how much were your Game Boy games in 1997? Game & Watch Gallery, 20. Kirby Star Stacker, 20. Marble Madness, 20. So everything was like $20. Oh, no, Toy Story was $25 and Tasmania 2 was $25. And down here we got some good old CD-ROM games for Windows 95. Adventure on Lego Island, Etch-A-Sketch, <laughs> and then, you know, Madden 97. Gotta have Madden everything. Oh my goodness, Barbie Fashion Designer. I wanted this so bad and I remember I finally got it for Christmas, I think, and it was so disappointing. Basically, the gist was you would make outfits and then you would be able to print them out on special fabric paper, cut them out, and somehow fit them on your Barbie. And you know, it's like basically making your own Barbie clothes. It did not work well at all. It was fun to design the clothes, but printing them out and trying to have your Barbie wear them just that was a mess. But the game itself was fun. I just look over here and I see, definitely, definitely what? And here we go, the Tiger Game Com. Wow. More than a portable game system. New Game Com is a personal organizer. And with optional internet modem cartridge, you can even send, receive email, and explore text-based internet pages. Wow. Includes lights out game cartridge. What kid wanted that? Did anybody want that? That was not on my radar as a kid. I don't know. I was thinking about the Game Boy and Super Nintendo. <laughs> okay, so the Gamecom was $69.99, and how much were the cartridges? So $22.99, $29.99. Now here we have the Tiger Electronics page. Got some Wheel of Fortune, some Jeopardy. 
Oh, look at this. Batman and Robin. Every kid needs an electronics game for Christmas. Just ask one. Ours come with an extra holiday value. When you have them delivered, you'll save time this busy season. Yeah, every, every kid needs this. What is that action figure for? Like, does he stay on the D-pad like that? And then here we have Little Mermaid. I had the one from the early 90s, you know, that was white. But I guess this is the new and approved Little Mermaid Tiger handheld. The game looks the same, though. Oh my god, the Clueless phone. I kind of remember this. Clueless was a big thing. They had like the series and the Barbies and everything around 1997. And of course you could get Sabrina the Teenage Witch in Barbie form. Even comes with a little Salem and a book of spells. That's cute. And now here's some Hot Wheels. I'm surprised the Hot Wheels section isn't bigger. We also got some micro machines and stuff, but we got this, the Hot Wheels Garage. I remember in middle school, we were way too old to be doing this, but uh, one of our guy friends, he we went to Target, he bought himself a Hot Wheels. Then we walked back to the mall, and on a bench in the mall, we put this whole thing together. It wasn't this one, but it was kind of like that. And it was just like, what are we doing? <laughs> I don't know, we thought it was funny, because when you're like 12, you think everything is funny. And we thought that was funny. So every year there's always a section of tents and sleeping bags. Tents were so cool. Look at this one. Jurassic Park tents. There's even one where it's like you're driving the Jeep. That's cool. Ooh, Batmobile tent. I don't remember the car ones. That's interesting. I was probably, see, I was a little too old by 97. So I guess that's when they introduced the, the car tents. But I used to like tents like that. It was so much fun. And then if you had to sleep over, everyone would try to fit in the tent. And of course, there was all the VTech stuff. Brain boost. Oh, look at that. A video painter. VTech video painter. Huh. I wonder if that is better than the LJN video art. Oh, they even came with a little mouse. That's funny. But yeah, man, VTech was everywhere in the 90s. Pre-Computer Unlimited. See, that's the badass one. Yeah, what every kid wants to do makes charts, memos, reports. You can organize your day. <laughs> God, so, so much VTech. Now this caught my eye. I really liked Casper as a kid. I never saw this. Casper Shooting Gallery. Enclosed shooting gallery with revolving and pop-up targets. Scoring ball shoots. Automatic scorekeeper for $20. Look how cool that is. I think that's cool. All right, so for the back of the catalog, it says destination action. And it's just some random remote control toys. I had a remote control car from Radio Shack. It was cool, but the battery would just, it would die so fast. <laughs> Anyway, so that was Christmas 1997, JC Penny style. I hope you guys had fun looking through that with me. And I will be back again very soon, maybe with some more toy catalogs. We will see. Anyway, bye.